All right, tech community, we need to talk about Intel 14th gen, but before I go any further, we do need to talk about my relationship with Intel. So full disclosure, a lot of you who have been following me for years now know that I tend to uh, promote and get sponsored by or just recommend products that I enjoy using personally firsthand. So you kind of already know that when I'm putting together my own system, whether it was Deep Blue, which had a Threadripper 3970X, I absolutely love that system, um, to Destro, which have had a number of different processors, AMD 7950X, 5950X, uh, 13900 KS, uh, just all kinds of just different systems, whether it's AMD or Intel. I just use what I feel is best for me at the time or if I want to try something that is just a bit different than what I've been used to. So with that being said, yeah, Intel and I have a great relationship. You know, I get um, information that I'm under NDA for or even implied NDA. Uh, they did send me or basically hand me uh, all the latest 14th gen CPUs. So we have the um, core, oh, okay, so the core, I, uh, which one is this? The 14700K in this one. And then in this one, sorry, I haven't even like taken them out the box. We have the 14600K and the 14900K. And then they've also given me um, motherboards, RAM, and all kinds of other stuff so that I could properly test this stuff. And, you know, Intel has also sent me to Malaysia, uh, the lady and I, so we could film their uh, facilities for how they actually make these. Um, understanding their efficiencies, uh, processors that are to come, like Meteor Lake and all that good stuff. So there's a lot that I know that I can't talk about. There's a lot that I know that is just public knowledge now, which is cool. Uh, I guess the point of this video is a lot of people are, um, whether it's content creators, reviewers, um, a lot of them are, are pretty much dragging 14th gen um, through the mud and a lot of uh, my viewers as well saying like what's the point of you know upgrading to 14th gen very valid points all of them 100 percent valid but they're missing the points and whether i was uh sponsored or partnered or an intel ambassador or not i would have this same thing because other companies have done the same exact thing over and over again when you have um, manufacturing capabilities like Intel and, and other companies, Samsung does this a lot too, and Apple, um, you find your efficiencies. You find out what processes work and you push those even further. You find out what processes uh, definitely need some help and you work on those and make those even more efficient. So with Intel, on their 13th gen processors and their 12th gen processors, both very same from 12 to 13 they moved a few things around on the cpu not like physically like move them around so if you want to delid a 13th gen cpu which i have done uh, that's taking off the ihs it's going to be a little bit different of a process compared to the 12th gen because it's physically different in some parts now when it comes to the 14th gen um, it's very similar to 12th and 13th gen, but now it's more refined. I'm sure you've been hearing this term of refinement or like processes getting more efficient. Intel had the ability of just not launching this, right? They could have just said, hey, 13th gen and this 13KS gen or whatever you want to call it, 14th gen, is very, very similar. But when it comes to tech, and manufacturing capabilities and efficiencies, things are always going to be improving. You, you're learning about your mistakes. You're increasing your yields of higher quality or binned CPUs. And therefore, Intel, in, in my opinion, and this isn't from them, this is my opinion, their processes over the last two years of going from like 12th gen to 13th gen have just improved so much where it just kind of makes sense to be like, hey, 13th gen is okay, it's selling okay, but we have the ability to just not try too much harder and give 14th gen, which is an actually more efficient, a better quality processor, basically 13th gen S, and give that option to consumers. 
that in turn for us as consumers gives us the opportunity to buy 12th and 13th gen CPUs at a little bit of a lower price, which is kind of cool, especially if the performance from 13th gen to 14th gen is very similar. Some tests are within margin of error. Some are actually quite impressive, like beating world records in terms of clock speeds. So you have this ability now to buy a more refined processor from Intel, the 14th gen. You have your uh, Core i5-14600K, which is a decent price and, and exceptional performance for that price. Of course, we have the now bumped up in cores and, and multi-thread uh, processes for the uh, i7, which is quite nice, the 14700K. Easy to recommend for, say, content creators, uh, even some uh, light video editors that are really just diving into that sector. And of course, gaming for all of these is going to be spectacular. And then the creme of the crop, the 14900K, for those that just want the best of the best. And you're going to get all kinds of great video editing and gaming out of that. And of course, some exceptional overclocking. Plus, with this, one of the biggest things that I think is, is impressive to me is the refinement of the memory controller. DDR5 has been a crapshoot. We all know that. Since the first day it came out, people were just having trouble just booting up their systems, let alone overclocking that RAM. Um, and then when 13th gen came out, we're going from like Z690 to Z790. That was a bit of a interesting mix because you can go DDR4 or spend a lot of money and go DDR5. Now pricing and basically the scaling of DDR5 has become much more affordable. So it's kind of like a no brainer, just go DDR5 these days. You're getting higher clock speeds. Yes, the timings are a little bit slower compared to DDR4, but the higher clock speeds make up for that definitely. And different styles of DDR5 are out there too. Um, but now with these slightly improved uh, memory controllers on these CPUs, we're getting things like, uh, here we go, 8,000 mega transfers RAM that should just be plug and play on these things, um, which is quite cool. This one is by uh, XMP, so um, you always want to see whatever motherboard you have, what RAM has been tested, you know, quality approved, blah, blah, blah. So if you're using Gigabyte, Asus, whatever, they have uh, MSI, they have um, on their websites RAM that's approved. So that gives you a better chance of basically being plug and play with certain things like this. Now, when it comes to uh, how a lot of content creators and news media outlets have been bashing 14th gen, uh, again, I understand. Uh, but a lot of them need to understand the big picture of there's such a huge um, amount of people around the world that are buying their PCs for the first time. There's a huge amount of uh, businesses that they're scaling. They're like, hey, we need something that is going to work, that is very reliable. That's kind of what the 14th gen is. This is 12th, 13th gen experiences rolled into a very stable, very solid, very high running in terms of performance uh, CPU. So no, if, if you're on 13th gen, unless you're an enthusiast with a good amount of money, you know, to kind of throw away, there's really no reason to go 14th gen unless you just want to say, hey, I got 14th gen. Um, for me personally, you know, some of my main rigs are 7950X, Threadripper 3970X, and 13900K and 13900KS. Um, I would not have spent my own money to go 14th gen because of the small performance improvements unless suddenly I wanted to start to like really overclock RAM and or really overclock a 49RK to see like where I would line up with my capabilities for overclocking when it comes to using a tech cooler, thermoelectric cooler that I have by EKWB, de-litting the 14900K to see how well I could do that. Um, or even just uh, air cooling or um, an AIO. So these are some of the things that I enjoy doing. So maybe that's the reason why I would have spent my own money on a 14900K um, if Intel hadn't sent the whole generation to me. Um, but that's the thing. I am a content creator and I've always kind of kept a broad view of hey, what makes sense for my viewers? And when you guys ask me what GPU should I get or what CPU should I get, one of the most common responses I, I give you is, well, what are you trying to do with your PC? What, what kind of, you know, are you gaming? Are you video editing? Are you doing photography? Um, like, what's the goal? 
And with that added information, and of course, what's the budget, uh, I can give you a more realistic uh, recommendation in terms of what motherboard to get, types of RAM, speed of RAM, your storage solutions, all that stuff. And I love doing that. I can't do that for 260,000 of you that are, you know, subscribed, but I, I try to answer the more frequently asked questions or the ones that are just like obvious, like, hey, you're going the wrong way. You know, you may want to consider spending two thousand dollars less and getting this set up and it does exactly what you need and you wouldn't see any difference between a one thousand dollar pc build and a five thousand dollar pc build based on how you're using that pc which is a huge huge deal that's why i think a lot of people are thoroughly going to enjoy the 14600k cpu that is an excellent price point for the performance and you won't need to upgrade for years uh, content creators, yeah, 14700K, definitely. Enthusiasts, 14900K, right? That's basically how it goes. Uh, and then AMD's got their own um, really interesting solutions as well with the, you know, the X3D and all that stuff, all depending on what you're doing though, because you can be like, hey, I want the, the best gaming CPU out there. And a lot of people were saying it was a 5800X3D and 7800X3D and all that good stuff, which is cool. But remember, things change. Not all games will run the same on every single CPU uh, or every single GPU. Some games are made to run better on AMD GPUs versus uh, maybe an Intel GPU now. That, that's a cool thing. Or an NVIDIA GPU. So it always comes down to where are you coming from. If you're on a very hot running 10900K CPU um, and you have some money to spend, hey, a 14700K, 14900K may be an, an excellent upgrade for you. Um, these are things that they're not really made for people that go from 13th gen to 14th gen. That's the huge fault that a lot of these reviewers are saying like, hey, what's the point? This is a boring you know, uh, generation. And yeah, it is a stretch to call it another generation. I 100% agree, but I would rather Intel release something that is more refined, more stable, gives us better, you know, overclocking capabilities for RAM and the CPU, uh, has Wi-Fi 7, um, geez. And a lot of these motherboards that are coming out that are really supporting 14th gen have 10 gig LAN as well. So there's a lot of cool features that they're bringing but they're not applicable to everybody. I have had Wi-Fi 7 here for months now, and yet, you know, it, it's dumb expensive to upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 right now. But that's because I'm a content creator. TP-Link sent me a whole Wi-Fi 7 mesh setup. It was $1,500. It's not meant to brag. This is inform information. The videos I did on it showed how capable that Wi-Fi 7 setup is for me here, where I was getting three, almost four times the speed outside at the pool compared to my Wi-Fi 6E setup, which was very robust at the time. And these are things that people need to consider based on their own household, their own situation, is spending money on the latest technology worth it for them. If you wanna do some gaming and content creation outside by the pool and you're struggling on Wi-Fi 6, 6E, then yeah, maybe Wi-Fi 7 is that sweet spot for you right now, even if you're spending a bit of a premium. But there's a lot of motherboards coming out for Wi-Fi 7 right now. I have a couple of them laying on the floor. Um, geez, laptops coming out with Wi-Fi 7. Like there's gonna be a lot of Wi-Fi 7 devices. It's Samsung phones, Apple eventually, who knows when. Um, you know, the uh, OnePlus phone uh, has actually had Wi-Fi 7 on it for a while. That was one of the phones that I tested months ago when I actually got Wi-Fi 7. So there's different things that you can do with PCs, in summary. Um, just keep in mind that just because a new product has come out, it doesn't mean it's right for you. It might be perfect for somebody else coming from an 8700K or 10900K uh, or just a brand new build altogether. Uh, and if somebody's a bit on a budget and they are fine going with 13th gen or 12th gen, it's perfectly fine. So it's great to have options. That's the point of this. And I'm really happy that Intel did come up with this 14th gen so that they can actually just give us some slightly better technology, better efficiencies, um, better room for overclock and all that good stuff. So that's kind of my rant. Really disappointed in a lot of content creators, uh, unfortunately, that just, you know, 
the headlines are there. Like, I just want to bash this because it's only a two to five or less than 10% upgrade in performance. That's not the point of it. The point of it is what I just said. These are just a little bit better for the same price as what we we're paying for a 13th gen. And now 13th gen is going to be a little bit more affordable as well. So that's what I had to say on this. Uh, again, yes, I am sponsored by Intel, Ambassador, and all that good stuff. They've sent me halfway around the world. But this is me, the poets, Terrence, giving you my feedback. Not a sponsored video at all. Even though, yes, these are free products that they have given me. So uh, I just like to be as transparent as possible. And no, if you are doing the 14th gen challenge, there's no code in this video, okay? That's, that's other videos. And uh, with that, thanks for watching. Peace.